Welcome back to P3. Today we're looking at differentiating sine and cos and this is unit 6.1. Now differentiating these two from first principles is quite interesting however it's not required by the syllabus for the exams so I'm not going to go through it. I'm sure there are plenty of other videos online that I'll show you differentiating these from first principles we're just gonna focus on what we need to do for the exams so you need to know that essentially if you differentiate sine you will get cos and if you differentiate cos you will get negative sine and if I have a value in front of that x say in this case we'll call it k when if, if I differentiate sine here I get cos so cos kx and then I multiply by this part differentiated so kx differentiates to k so I multiply by k and the same with the cos differentiating cos takes me to minus sine and differentiating kx is just k so this becomes minus k sine kx now one other additional piece of information that you need to know for this is that all your angles must be in radians so this comes from differentiating in first principles the angles have to be in radians for us to use that process therefore when we are differentiating all our angles must be in radians because that's what this is based on so remember in calculus no degrees radians only let's look at some examples so part a here we have y equals sine 3x so when i differentiate this sine goes to cos and then I multiply by this part differentiated so 3x differentiates to 3 so it's 3 cos 3x part b very similar y equals cos 5x so differentiating this cos differentiates to negative sine and I'm multiplying by the differential of 5x, which is 5, so it's minus 5 sine 5x. C, you can sine 2x minus 4 cos 5 over 2x. So they're separated by a minus sign, so we deal with them separately. Sine differentiates the cos, so this is going to become 2 cos 2x cos will differentiate to minus sine so instead of a negative it's going to become plus I've still got that 4 and I'm multiplying by 5 over 2 sine x there. now 2 is going to cancel with that so this leaves me with 2 cos 2x plus 10 sine and I made a little mistake here I missed out the 5 over 2. So 5 over 2x is my angle. And I must remember to keep that the same. So when I differentiate, the angle will always remain the same. Part D. So for this one, I've currently got a large single fraction. And I want to split this up. So we get 3 over x plus 2x sine 7x over x. Now this x will cancel with this one. So I get 3x to the minus 1 plus 2 sine 7x. And then differentiating this minus one's going to come down so I've got a minus 3x to the minus 2 sine differentiates the cos so it's going to be positive 
and I need to multiply by that 7, so you get 14 cos 7x, remembering that the angle stays the same. And finally, I can write this as minus 3 over x squared plus 14 cos 7x, or a better way would be to put the 14 cos 7x first, minus 3 over x squared. But any of these ways, starting from this initial line here, would be correct. Okay, so a curve has equation y equals 3x squared plus sine 4x. Find the tangent. So first we need to differentiate so that we can find the gradient. So this is going to be 6x plus, and sine differentiates the cos multiplied by 4. Now x equals pi, so substituting that in I get 6 pi plus 4 cos 4 pi, which if you know your angles you will know that the cos 4 pi is just going to be 1, so it leaves me with 6 pi plus 4. So I've got my gradient, I've got my x value, and before I can jump in and use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, I need my y coordinate. So my y coordinate I'm going to get from my original equation. So I need to substitute pi into my original equation. Now sine of 4 pi is going to be 0, so my y value is 3 pi squared. And I'll leave this in terms of pi just for easy calculations. So now we have y minus 3 pi squared equals 6 pi plus 4 times x minus pi. So y minus 3 pi squared equals 6 pi plus 4x minus 6 pi squared minus 4 pi. And then take my 3 pi, or add in 3 pi squared to each side, I get this minus 3 pi squared minus 4 pi. Now, as this one stands, it isn't very pretty, but this type of question will often have you show that the equation of the tangent is a specific equation, so it'll give you the form it wants the answer in. Alternatively, it could ask it for these values to three significant figures, or three decimal places. So if you got one of these types of questions, it would most likely give you a little bit more of a hint in what form to leave the final answer. Uh, but this one I'm just gonna leave as it is. Thank you for watching. 
If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button and also if you want to hit the bell icon so that you get notified the next time a new video is released.